Welcome back to our channel. We hope you'll find valuable content here. If you enjoy our channel, please remember to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more. Let's dive in. Episode 1 Managing Human Capital Introduction to Human Capital Management Welcome to MBA Business School's program on managing human capital. In this episode, we're going to start at the very beginning by exploring the significance of effective human resource management in organizations. Imagine a business as a well-oiled machine. It has all the latest technology, the best equipment, and a prime location. But what truly makes this machine work? It's the people, the employees who design, operate, and maintain the machine. They are your most valuable asset, and that's what we call human capital. Human Capital Management, HCM, is all about recognizing and nurturing the value that employees bring to an organization. It's not just about hiring and firing, it's about maximizing the potential of every individual within your workforce. Here are some key points to consider. 1. People drive success. In today's knowledge-based economy, a company's success isn't solely dependent on its products or services. It's the skills, creativity, and dedication of the employees that drive innovation and growth. 2. Attracting and retaining talent. Finding the right people for your organization is a challenge. You need to be able to attract and retain top talent in a competitive job market. It's not just about hiring anyone, it's about hiring the right people who fit your company culture and have the skills you need. 3. Employee Engagement Engaged employees are more productive, creative, and loyal. They're the ones who go the extra mile to achieve organizational goals. Effective HCM strategies help boost employee engagement. Four. Compliance and legal considerations, managing human capital also means ensuring compliance with labor laws, regulations, and ethical standards. Failing to do so can lead to costly legal issues and damage to your company's reputation. 5. Aligning HR with business goals, effective HCM aligns HR strategies with overall business objectives. Your HR practices should support your company's mission and vision. Let's illustrate this with a real-life example. Imagine two retail companies, A and B, selling similar products. Company A invests in training, supports employee development, and fosters a positive work environment. Company B, on the other hand, neglects its employees' needs and development. Over time, Company A's employees become more skilled, motivated, and customer-focused. They provide exceptional service, leading to repeat business and positive word of mouth. Company B struggles with high turnover, unhappy customers, and ultimately, lower profits. In this scenario, Company A's effective human capital management gave them a significant competitive advantage and contributed to their success. They invested in their employees' growth and well-being, while Company B treated employees as expendable resources. Now. Think about this on a larger scale in the business world. Companies that embrace HCM principles, like Company A, tend to thrive in the long run. They attract and retain top talent, foster innovation, and build a positive reputation. Conversely, those that neglect HCM, like Company B, often face challenges that can hinder their growth and sustainability. Throughout this program, we'll delve deeper into various aspects of HCM, from talent acquisition to employee engagement, and from legal considerations to ethical leadership. Our goal is to equip you with the knowledge and skills to manage your organization's most valuable asset effectively, its people. So, get ready to embark on this journey of understanding and mastering human capital management. It's not just about business, it's about people and that's where your success begins. In our next episode, we will delve into the critical topic of talent acquisition and recruitment, exploring how to attract and retain the right talent for your organization's success. Episode 2, Managing Human Capital, Talent Acquisition and Recruitment Welcome back to our Managing Human Capital program at MBA Business School. In this episode, we'll dive into the critical topic of talent acquisition and recruitment and how it plays a pivotal role in human capital management. 
Imagine your organization as a sports team. To win the game, you need not only skilled players, but also those who perfectly fit into your team's strategy and culture. This analogy is quite similar to recruitment in a business setting. Let's break it down. 1. The talent game. Just like a sports team, your company needs the right talent. Not just any talent, but individuals whose skills align with your business goals. Effective talent acquisition means identifying and attracting individuals who will thrive in your organization. 2. A competitive arena. The job market is like a competitive arena. Talented individuals have options, and they'll choose the organizations that offer the best opportunities and environments. To win this competition, you must have a compelling employer brand and an attractive workplace culture. 3. The recruitment process. Imagine the recruitment process as the scouting and selection phase in sports. It involves creating job descriptions, advertising positions, interviewing candidates, and making job offers. A well-structured recruitment process helps ensure you're bringing the right people on board. 4. The cost of hiring. Recruiting new talent isn't just about finding the best fit, it's also about doing it efficiently. Hiring and onboarding can be costly processes, so it's crucial to get it right the first time to avoid high turnover and expenses. Now, let's connect this to our real-life example. Remember companies A and B? Company A invests in training and supports employee development, while Company B neglects its employees' needs. When it comes to talent acquisition, Company A has a strong employer brand. Skilled individuals are attracted to the prospect of growth and development that Company A offers. They know they'll be valued as employees, not just as resources. Company B, on the other hand, struggles to attract top talent because its reputation is tarnished by poor treatment of employees. They find it challenging to convince talented individuals to join their team. In this example, Company A's commitment to effective talent acquisition and recruitment is a key factor in their success. It sets the stage for the rest of their human capital management practices. As you progress through this program, we'll explore strategies to identify, attract, and retain top talent effectively. It's not just about finding the right players, it's about ensuring they are a perfect fit for your team and your long-term success. Stay tuned for more insights into the world of human capital management. In our next episode, we will delve into the critical topic of job analysis and design, understanding how to optimize job roles for both employee satisfaction and organizational performance. Join us as we continue our exploration of human capital management. Episode 3, Managing Human Capital, Job Analysis and Design Welcome back to our journey through managing human capital at MBA Business School. In this episode, we're delving into the essential topic of job analysis and design and its profound impact on human capital management. Imagine your organization as a well-structured building. Each brick, beam, and support serves a specific purpose, contributing to the stability and functionality of the entire structure. Similarly, in the business world, job roles are like the architectural plans, and employees are the builders who construct the edifice of your organization's success. Let's explore this concept further. 1. The Blueprint of Job Roles Just as architects meticulously plan every aspect of a building, your organization must carefully analyze job roles. Job analysis involves breaking down these roles into their components, understanding the tasks, skills, and responsibilities they entail. 2. Constructing a solid foundation. Once you've analyzed job roles, you can design them to create a sturdy foundation. This means ensuring that tasks are meaningful, challenging, and aligned with the skills and talents of your employees, just as a well-constructed building ensures stability and functionality. 3. A functional edifice, effective job analysis and design contribute to a functional workplace where employees feel engaged and fulfilled in their roles. This not only boosts morale, but also enhances productivity, just as a well-designed building serves its intended purpose efficiently. 
For renovation and adaptation, just as a building may require renovations to accommodate changing needs, your organization must be flexible in adapting job roles to evolving business requirements. Now, let's connect this to our real-life example. Remember companies A and B? Company A invests in training, supports employee development, and excels in talent acquisition. When it comes to job analysis and design, they meticulously craft job roles that align with their employees' skills and aspirations. This approach fosters a sense of purpose and satisfaction among their workforce. Company B, on the other hand, struggles with high turnover due to disengaged employees. Their job roles lack clarity and meaningful tasks, leading to frustration among their workforce. In this scenario, Company A's commitment to effective job analysis and design significantly contributes to their success. They construct their workforce, ensuring that every employee plays a meaningful part in the organization's architecture. As you progress through this program, we'll explore strategies to conduct job analyses effectively, design roles that empower employees, and adapt to changing business landscapes. Stay tuned for more insights into the world of human capital management. In our next episode, we'll dive into the critical topic of performance management and appraisal, understanding how to nurture employee growth and drive organizational success through effective feedback and evaluation processes. Join us as we continue our exploration of human capital management. Episode 4, Managing Human Capital, Performance Management and Appraisal Welcome back to our ongoing series on managing human capital at MBA Business School. In this episode, we'll explore the vital aspects of performance management and appraisal and how these processes significantly impact human capital management. Imagine your organization as a sports team once again. While talent acquisition helps you assemble a strong team, it's the performance management and appraisal process that ensures your players stay in top form throughout the season. Let's dive deeper into this analogy. 1. Coaching and Training Just as a sports coach provides guidance and training to athletes, performance management involves ongoing coaching and development for employees. This process aims to enhance skills, address weaknesses, and set clear performance expectations. 2. Keeping score. In sports, keeping score helps track progress and determine who's performing well. Similarly, performance appraisal provides a structured way to evaluate employee contributions, identify strengths, and address areas that need improvement. 3. Motivation and recognition. Athletes thrive on recognition and rewards for their achievements. Similarly, in the workplace, effective performance management includes recognizing and rewarding employees for their hard work and accomplishments. 4. Continuous improvement, sports teams constantly strive to improve their performance. In the business world, performance management is an ongoing process that encourages continuous improvement, leading to better individual and organizational outcomes. Now, let's connect this to our real-life example. Remember companies A and B? Company A not only excels in talent acquisition and job analysis and design, but also has a robust performance management and appraisal system in place. They provide regular feedback to employees, help them set goals, and offer opportunities for skill development. As a result, employees at Company A are highly motivated and continuously improve their performance. Company B, however, lacks an effective performance management process. Employees rarely receive feedback, and their contributions go unrecognized. This leads to disengagement and a lack of motivation among the workforce. In this scenario, Company A's commitment to performance management and appraisal significantly contributes to their success. They ensure that their employees are continuously coached, motivated, and recognized for their contributions. As you progress through this program, we'll delve deeper into strategies for effective performance management and appraisal. These processes are key to nurturing employee growth and driving organizational success. In our next episode, we will explore the critical topic of training and development, understanding how to foster a culture of continuous learning and skill enhancement within your organization. Join us as we continue our exploration of human capital management.
Episode 5, Managing Human Capital, Training and Development Welcome back to Managing Human Capital at MBA Business School. In this episode, we're delving into the vital aspects of training and development and how they play a pivotal role in human capital management. Think of your organization as a garden. Just as a garden requires nurturing and care to flourish, your employees need training and development to reach their full potential and contribute to your organization's growth. Let's explore this analogy further. 1. Cultivating skills. Just as a gardener cultivates plants by providing the right nutrients and care, training helps employees acquire new skills and knowledge. It's about equipping your workforce with the tools they need to thrive. 2. Growth and blooming. In a well-tended garden, plants grow, bloom, and bear fruit. Similarly, training and development help employees grow in their roles, realize their potential, and become valuable assets to the organization. 3. Regular pruning. In gardening, pruning is essential to remove dead branches and encourage healthy growth. Likewise, ongoing development ensures employees stay relevant in their roles and adapt to changing industry trends. 4. Fostering a learning culture. Just as a garden flourishes when it's surrounded by an environment conducive to growth, organizations benefit from fostering a culture of continuous learning and skill enhancement. Now, let's connect this to our real-life example. Companies A and B are back in the spotlight. Company A, known for its comprehensive human capital management practices, excels in training and development. They invest in employee skill development, offer relevant courses, and provide opportunities for learning and growth. As a result, employees at Company A continually improve their skills and contribute to the organization's success. Company B, on the other hand, neglects training and development, leaving employees with stagnant skills and limited career growth opportunities. This lack of investment leads to a disengaged workforce and reduced competitiveness in the market. In this scenario, Company A's commitment to training and development significantly contributes to their success. They've created a learning culture that fosters employee growth, ultimately benefiting the organization. As you progress through this program, we'll delve deeper into strategies for effective training and development. These processes are essential to nurturing your employees' potential and ensuring your organization stays competitive. In our next episode, we'll explore the critical topic of compensation and benefits, understanding how to design fair and competitive packages that motivate and retain top talent. Join us as we continue our exploration of human capital management. Episode 6, Managing Human Capital, Compensation and Benefits Welcome back to Managing Human Capital at MBA Business School. In this episode, we're diving into the crucial aspects of compensation and benefits and their impact on human capital management. Consider your organization as a marketplace. Your employees bring their skills and talents to the market, and in return, they expect fair compensation and benefits for their contributions. Let's delve deeper into this analogy. 1. The fair exchange. Just as a marketplace relies on fair and equitable transactions, employees expect their work to be fairly compensated. This includes not only salary, but also benefits such as health care, retirement plans, and more. 2. Attracting top talent. Just as attractive products draw customers to a marketplace, competitive compensation and benefits packages attract top talent to your organization. In a competitive job market, these offerings can be a significant factor in talent acquisition. 3. Customer satisfaction. In a marketplace, customer satisfaction is crucial for business success. Similarly, employee satisfaction, which includes compensation and benefits, is vital for a motivated and engaged workforce. 4. Adapting to market trends. Like any marketplace, the job market experiences trends and fluctuations. Organizations must adapt their compensation and benefits strategies to remain competitive and attract and retain top talent. Now, let's connect this to our real-life example. Returning to companies A and B, we see how compensation and benefits play a pivotal role. 
Company A, with its comprehensive approach to human capital management, excels in this area. They offer competitive salaries and an attractive benefits package that includes healthcare, retirement plans, and additional perks. This not only attracts top talent but also motivates and retains their workforce. Company B, however, lags behind in compensation and benefits. They offer lower salaries and fewer benefits, making it challenging to attract and retain skilled employees. This leads to high turnover and, ultimately, affects their bottom line. In this scenario, Company A's commitment to compensation and benefits significantly contributes to their success. They understand the importance of fair and competitive offerings in the marketplace of talent. As you progress through this program, we'll explore strategies for designing compensation and benefits packages that motivate and retain top talent, ensuring your organization remains competitive and attractive to prospective employees. In our next episode, we'll explore employee motivation and engagement, delving into theories and practices that inspire employees to give their best and stay committed to the organization. Join us as we continue our exploration of human capital management. Episode 7, Managing Human Capital, Employee Motivation, and Engagement Welcome back to Managing Human Capital at MBA Business School. In this episode, we're delving into the essential topic of employee motivation and engagement and how it plays a crucial role in human capital management. Imagine your organization as a sports team once more. Just as a coach motivates and engages players to give their best on the field, effective employee motivation and engagement strategies inspire your workforce to achieve their full potential. Let's explore this analogy further. 1. The coach's role, just as a coach sets the tone for the team's motivation and engagement, leaders in your organization play a vital role in inspiring and guiding employees. They create a culture that values and motivates individuals. 2. Fostering team spirit. In sports, team spirit and collaboration drive success. Similarly, organizations benefit from fostering a sense of belonging, encouraging collaboration, and recognizing individual and team achievements. 3. Recognizing achievements. Athletes thrive on recognition and applause from fans and teammates. Similarly, employees are motivated and engaged when their efforts are acknowledged and rewarded. 4. A winning culture. Successful sports teams often have a winning culture that inspires players to give their best. Similarly, organizations with a culture of excellence and continuous improvement motivate employees to excel. Now, let's connect this to our real-life example. Companies A and B are back in the spotlight. Company A, known for its comprehensive human capital management practices, excels in employee motivation and engagement. They provide regular feedback, recognition, and opportunities for growth. Employees at Company A feel valued and motivated to contribute their best. Company B, on the other hand, struggles with disengaged employees. They lack a culture of recognition and fail to inspire their workforce. This leads to reduced productivity and lower morale. In this scenario, Company A's commitment to employee motivation and engagement significantly contributes to their success. They understand that motivated and engaged employees are more productive, creative, and loyal. As you progress through this program, we'll delve deeper into theories and practices for inspiring and engaging employees. These strategies are essential for nurturing a motivated workforce and driving organizational success. In our next episode, we will explore diversity and inclusion in the workplace, understanding how fostering an inclusive environment that values diversity can contribute to a more innovative and dynamic workforce. Join us as we continue our exploration of human capital management. Episode 8, Managing Human Capital, Diversity, and Inclusion in the Workplace. Welcome back to Managing Human Capital at MBA Business School. In this episode, we're exploring the critical topic of diversity and inclusion in the workplace and how it shapes human capital management. Imagine your organization as a vibrant mosaic, where each unique piece contributes to the overall picture. 
Just as diverse colors and shapes create a more beautiful mosaic, a diverse workforce brings varied perspectives and experiences, enriching your organization's culture and capabilities. Let's delve into this analogy. 1. The Mosaic of Diversity Diversity encompasses differences in gender, race, ethnicity, age, background, and more. Like the pieces in a mosaic, these differences, when combined, create a more vibrant and dynamic whole. 2. The Inclusive Canvas Just as a mosaic artist carefully selects and arranges each piece, organizations must actively foster inclusion by ensuring that every employee feels valued, respected, and heard. 3. Creativity and Innovation Diversity fosters creativity and innovation. Different perspectives can lead to unique solutions and fresh ideas, much like a mosaic artist's creativity in arranging pieces. 4. Strengthening the Foundation Inclusion strengthens your organization's foundation. It promotes collaboration, boosts morale, and attracts top talent, making your organization more competitive. Now, let's connect this to our real-life example. Companies A and B are back in the spotlight. Company A, known for its comprehensive human capital management practices, excels in fostering diversity and inclusion. They actively seek diverse talent, celebrate differences, and create an inclusive culture where every voice is valued. This diversity leads to innovative solutions and a stronger workforce. Company B, on the other hand, struggles with a lack of diversity and inclusion. They miss out on the benefits of varied perspectives, limiting their potential for innovation and growth. In this scenario, Company A's commitment to diversity and inclusion in the workplace significantly contributes to their success. They understand that a diverse and inclusive workforce is essential for driving innovation and creating a dynamic, competitive organization. As you progress through this program, we'll explore strategies for promoting diversity and inclusion in your organization, fostering an environment where every employee can thrive and contribute their best. In our next episode, we will delve into employee relations and conflict resolution, understanding how to manage employee relations effectively and resolve conflicts to maintain a harmonious workplace. Join us as we continue our exploration of human capital management. Episode 9, Managing Human Capital, Employee Relations, and Conflict Resolution Welcome back to Managing Human Capital at MBA Business School. In this episode, we're exploring the vital topic of employee relations and conflict resolution and its critical role in human capital management. Consider your organization as a bustling city. In this city, just as in any community, conflicts can arise. Effective employee relations and conflict resolution are like the city's infrastructure, ensuring that disputes are addressed promptly, maintaining peace, and enabling growth. Let's delve into this analogy. 1. The city's infrastructure, employee relations and conflict resolution processes are like the infrastructure of a city, including roads and bridges. They provide the necessary framework for managing conflicts and ensuring the smooth functioning of your organization. 2. Addressing traffic jams. Just as traffic jams can disrupt a city's flow, unresolved conflicts can disrupt the workplace. Effective conflict resolution helps clear these bottlenecks, enabling employees to work harmoniously. 3. Mediating disputes. Think of conflict resolution as the role of a mediator in a city council meeting. It involves impartially addressing disputes, facilitating discussions, and finding mutually acceptable solutions. 4. Promoting civic harmony, a city thrives when its citizens live in harmony. Similarly, a workplace thrives when employees experience fair treatment, respect, and effective conflict resolution. Now, let's connect this to our real-life example. Companies A and B are back in the spotlight. Company A, known for its comprehensive human capital management practices, excels in employee relations and conflict resolution. They have clear policies in place, offer mediation when needed, and prioritize open communication. This fosters a harmonious workplace where conflicts are addressed promptly, ensuring that employees can focus on their work. 
Company B, on the other hand, struggles with unresolved conflicts and a lack of effective employee relations. This leads to tension in the workplace, reduced productivity, and higher turnover. In this scenario, Company A's commitment to employee relations and conflict resolution significantly contributes to their success. They understand that a harmonious workplace is essential for employee well-being and organizational productivity. As you progress through this program, we'll explore strategies for managing employee relations effectively and resolving conflicts. These processes are crucial for maintaining a positive work environment where employees can thrive. In our next episode, we will dive into the topic of work-life balance and wellness programs, understanding how to promote employee well-being and create a healthy work-life balance. Join us as we continue our exploration of human capital management. Episode 10, Managing Human Capital Work-Life Balance and Wellness Programs Welcome back to Managing Human Capital at MBA Business School. In this episode, we're delving into the essential topic of work-life balance and wellness programs and their significant impact on human capital management. Picture your organization as a vibrant garden once more. Just as a garden needs care to flourish, your employees require a balanced environment to thrive both professionally and personally. Let's explore this analogy further. 1. The balanced garden, a well-tended garden strikes a balance between sunlight, water, and nutrients. Similarly, an organization that promotes work-life balance ensures that employees have the time and energy for both their professional and personal lives. 2. Nurturing growth. Just as gardeners nurture plants to ensure they grow healthy and strong, organizations nurture employees by offering wellness programs. These programs provide resources for physical and mental well-being, fostering a healthy and productive workforce. 3. Stress Reduction Like a peaceful garden, a workplace that supports work-life balance and wellness helps reduce stress among employees. This, in turn, leads to higher job satisfaction and overall well-being. 4. A flourishing ecosystem. In a balanced ecosystem, all elements coexist harmoniously. Similarly, a workplace that promotes work-life balance and wellness creates a harmonious environment where employees can thrive. Now, let's connect this to our real-life example. Companies A and B are back in focus. Company A, known for its comprehensive human capital management practices, excels in promoting work-life balance and wellness. They offer flexible work hours, wellness programs, and mental health resources. Employees at Company A enjoy a supportive environment that allows them to balance their professional and personal lives effectively. Company B, however, struggles with high stress levels among employees due to long working hours and a lack of wellness programs. This leads to burnout, decreased morale, and reduced productivity. In this scenario, Company A's commitment to work-life balance and wellness programs significantly contributes to their success. They understand that a healthy and balanced workforce is more productive and engaged. As you progress through this program, we'll explore strategies for promoting work-life balance and implementing wellness programs in your organization. These practices are essential for ensuring the well-being of your employees and, in turn, the success of your organization. In our next episode, we will dive into leadership development and succession planning, understanding how to identify and develop future leaders within your organization. Join us as we continue our exploration of human capital management. Episode 11, Managing Human Capital Leadership Development and Succession Planning Welcome back to Managing Human Capital at MBA Business School. In this episode, we're exploring the critical topic of leadership development and succession planning and how it contributes to human capital management. Think of your organization as a ship navigating uncharted waters. Just as a captain must groom and prepare future leaders to take the helm, your organization needs a clear strategy for identifying and developing the next generation of leaders. Let's delve into this analogy. 1. The Captain's Legacy A great captain ensures that their ship continues to sail successfully, even when they're not at the helm. Similarly, effective leadership development and succession planning ensure that your organization thrives in the future. 
2. Nurturing leadership skills. Just as a captain mentors their crew members to become capable leaders, your organization should invest in developing the leadership skills of high-potential employees. 3. Smooth transitions. Succession planning is like charting a course for the ship's journey. It involves identifying potential leaders, preparing them for their roles, and ensuring a smooth transition when leadership changes occur. 4. Continuity and adaptability, a well-prepared crew can adapt to changing conditions and navigate through storms. Similarly, a leadership pipeline ensures that your organization can adapt to industry changes and challenges. Now, let's connect this to our real-life example. Companies A and B are back in focus. Company A, known for its comprehensive human capital management practices, excels in leadership development and succession planning. They identify and nurture high-potential employees, providing them with opportunities for growth and leadership training. When leadership changes occur, Company A has a smooth transition process in place. Company B, on the other hand, lacks a structured leadership development program. When key leaders retire or move on, they struggle to fill leadership positions, leading to uncertainty and instability. In this scenario, Company A's commitment to leadership development and succession planning significantly contributes to their success. They understand that grooming future leaders is vital for the organization's long-term stability and growth. As you progress through this program, we'll explore strategies for identifying and developing future leaders within your organization. These practices are essential for ensuring continuity and adaptability in a changing business landscape. In our next episode, we will tackle the topic of managing remote and virtual teams, understanding how to effectively lead and manage teams in remote work settings. Join us as we continue our exploration of human capital management. Episode 12, Managing Human Capital, Managing Remote and Virtual Teams Welcome back to Managing Human Capital at MBA Business School. In this episode, we're diving into the critical topic of managing remote and virtual teams and its significance in human capital management. Imagine your organization as a global network, where teams collaborate seamlessly across borders and time zones. In today's digital age, remote and virtual teams have become an integral part of many organizations. Let's explore this concept further. 1. The Digital Landscape Just as the digital world connects people across vast distances, remote and virtual teams bring together talent from diverse locations. This enables organizations to tap into a global pool of skills and expertise. 2. Effective leadership, managing remote and virtual teams requires a different set of leadership skills. Leaders must excel in communication, trust building, and creating a sense of unity among team members, even when they're not physically together. 3. Flexibility and adaptation, remote work environments offer flexibility, allowing employees to balance work and personal life. Organizations that adapt to this trend can attract and retain top talent. 4. Collaboration tools. Just as a network relies on robust infrastructure, remote teams need reliable collaboration tools and technology to work effectively. Now, let's connect this to our real-life example. Companies A and B are back in focus. Company A, known for its comprehensive human capital management practices, excels in managing remote and virtual teams. They provide their teams with the latest collaboration tools, offer remote work options, and have leaders who excel in virtual communication. Company B, however, struggles with remote team management. They face challenges in communication, trust building, and maintaining team cohesion in virtual settings. This leads to reduced productivity among remote employees. In this scenario, Company A's commitment to managing remote and virtual teams significantly contributes to their success. They understand that in today's digital landscape, effective remote team management is crucial for tapping into global talent and staying competitive. As you progress through this program, we'll explore strategies for effectively managing remote and virtual teams, fostering collaboration, and ensuring that your organization remains agile and adaptable.
In our next episode, we will dive into change management and organizational culture, understanding the role of human resources in managing organizational change and cultivating a positive culture. Join us as we continue our exploration of human capital management. Episode 13, Managing Human Capital, Change Management and Organizational Culture Welcome back to Managing Human Capital at MBA Business School. In this episode, we're exploring the crucial topic of change management and organizational culture and its profound impact on human capital management. Consider your organization as a ship once more, but this time navigating through stormy seas of change. Change is a constant in the business world, and how your organization manages and adapts to it can define its success. Let's delve into this analogy. 1. Navigating Stormy Waters just as a skilled captain navigates through storms, effective change management helps your organization navigate the challenges of change. It involves planning, communication, and support to ensure a smooth transition. 2. The Cultural Compass Your organization's culture is like the compass guiding your ship's journey. A positive culture supports change initiatives by promoting openness, flexibility, and innovation. 3. Crew Engagement Like a dedicated crew, engaged employees are essential for successful change management. They are willing to adapt to new circumstances, contribute ideas, and support the organization during times of change. 4. Continuous Course Corrections As with any sea voyage, change management often requires adjustments along the way. Organizations must be agile, ready to make course corrections as needed to reach their destination. Now, let's connect this to our real-life example. Companies A and B are back in focus. Company A, known for its comprehensive human capital management practices, excels in change management and cultivating a positive organizational culture. They communicate changes effectively, involve employees in the process, and have a culture that embraces innovation and adaptation. Company B, on the other hand, struggles with change. They face resistance from employees, lack clear communication, and have a rigid culture that resists adaptation. This hinders their ability to thrive in a rapidly changing business landscape. In this scenario, Company A's commitment to change management and organizational culture significantly contributes to their success. They understand that a positive culture and effective change management are intertwined, driving the organization's ability to thrive in a changing world. As you progress through this program, we'll explore strategies for managing change effectively and fostering a culture that supports innovation and adaptation. In our next episode, we will dive into legal and ethical considerations in HR, understanding the importance of ethical decision-making and compliance with labor laws and regulations in human resource practices. Join us as we continue our exploration of human capital management. Episode 14, Managing Human Capital Legal and Ethical Considerations in HR Welcome back to Managing Human Capital at MBA Business School. In this episode, we'll delve into the critical topic of legal and ethical considerations in HR and how they shape human capital management. Think of your organization as a well-constructed building once again. Just as a strong foundation ensures the building's stability, adherence to legal and ethical standards provides a solid foundation for your organization's HR practices. Let's explore this analogy further. 1. Building on solid ground, compliance with labor laws and ethical standards is like constructing a building on stable ground. It ensures the organization's practices are legally sound and ethically responsible. 2. Blueprint of Ethics Ethical considerations are the blueprint that guides your HR practices. They define how you treat employees, applicants, and stakeholders. 3. Safety inspections Just as buildings undergo safety inspections, organizations must periodically review their HR practices to ensure compliance with changing laws and ethical standards. 4. Reputation as a foundation Your organization's reputation is its foundation. Ethical HR practices help maintain a positive reputation, attracting top talent and loyal customers. Now, let's connect this to our real-life example. Companies A and B are back in focus. 
Company A, known for its comprehensive human capital management practices, excels in adhering to legal and ethical standards. They have a strong HR compliance team, regularly update policies, and prioritize ethical decision-making. This not only keeps them out of legal trouble, but also fosters trust among employees and stakeholders. Company B, however, faces legal challenges and ethical dilemmas due to a lack of attention to compliance and ethical standards. This negatively impacts their reputation and employee morale. In this scenario, Company A's commitment to legal and ethical considerations in HR significantly contributes to their success. They understand that upholding legal and ethical standards is essential for building trust and maintaining a positive organizational reputation. As you progress through this program, we'll explore strategies for ensuring compliance with labor laws and ethical decision-making in HR practices. These principles are crucial for safeguarding your organization's reputation and fostering a positive work environment. In our next episode, we will delve into employee retention strategies, understanding techniques to retain and engage top talent in the organization. Join us as we continue our exploration of human capital management. Episode 15, Managing Human Capital Employee Retention Strategies Welcome back to Managing Human Capital at MBA Business School. In this episode, we'll explore the vital topic of employee retention strategies and how they contribute to effective human capital management. Think of your organization as a garden once again, but this time, it's a garden filled with rare and valuable flowers. Just as a skilled gardener takes special care to nurture these precious blooms, your organization should take proactive steps to retain its top talent. Let's delve into this analogy. 1. The rare blooms, your top performing employees are like rare and beautiful flowers in your garden. They are valuable assets that contribute significantly to your organization's success. 2. Nurturing and care. Just as a gardener provides the right nutrients and care to keep these special flowers thriving, your organization should offer development opportunities, recognition, and a positive work environment to retain top talent. 3. Preventing weeds. Weeds can choke and overshadow your prized flowers. Similarly, a high turnover rate can overshadow the contributions of your top talent and disrupt the organization's growth. 4. The beauty of loyalty, like a flourishing garden filled with rare blooms, an organization with high employee retention rates enjoys a stable and productive workforce that drives success. Now, let's connect this to our real-life example. Companies A and B are back in focus. Company A, known for its comprehensive human capital management practices, excels in employee retention strategies. They invest in employee development, offer competitive compensation, and recognize outstanding performance. This keeps their top talent loyal and engaged. Company B, however, faces challenges in retaining its best employees due to a lack of retention strategies. This leads to a high turnover rate and increased recruitment costs. In this scenario, Company A's commitment to employee retention strategies significantly contributes to their success. They understand that retaining top talent is more cost-effective and beneficial in the long run than frequent recruitment and onboarding. As you progress through this program, we'll explore various techniques and strategies to retain and engage top talent within your organization. These practices are essential for maintaining a high-performing workforce and ensuring organizational success. In our next episode, we will dive into HR metrics and analytics, understanding how to measure and analyze human resource performance using data. Join us as we continue our exploration of human capital management. Episode 16, Managing Human Capital HR Metrics and Analytics Welcome back to Managing Human Capital at MBA Business School. In this episode, we'll explore the essential topic of HR metrics and analytics and how they empower human capital management. Imagine your organization as a laboratory filled with valuable experiments. Just as scientists use data to make informed decisions and optimize their experiments, HR professionals use metrics and analytics to enhance their strategies and optimize their workforce. Let's delve into this analogy. 
1. The laboratory of HR. HR professionals act as scientists in your organization's laboratory, conducting experiments to improve talent acquisition, retention, and overall performance. 2. Data as the catalyst. Data, much like chemicals in a laboratory, serves as the catalyst for informed decision making. HR metrics and analytics provide valuable insights into employee performance, engagement, and trends. 3. Experiment optimization. Just as scientists adjust their experiments based on data, HR professionals fine tune their strategies by analyzing metrics. This helps in optimizing HR practices for better results. 4. Achieving breakthroughs. Through HR metrics and analytics, organizations can achieve breakthroughs in talent management, driving innovation and competitive advantage. Now, let's connect this to our real life example. Companies A and B are back in focus. Company A, known for its comprehensive human capital management practices, excels in HR metrics and analytics. They gather and analyze data on employee performance, engagement, and turnover. This data-driven approach allows them to make informed decisions and continuously improve their HR strategies. Company B, however, lacks a robust analytics system. They rely on intuition rather than data, making it challenging to pinpoint areas for improvement. This hampers their ability to optimize their HR practices effectively. In this scenario, Company A's commitment to HR metrics and analytics significantly contributes to their success. They understand that data-driven decision-making is crucial for identifying opportunities and addressing challenges in human capital management. As you progress through this program, we'll explore various HR metrics and analytics tools and techniques, helping you harness the power of data to enhance your HR strategies. In our next episode, we will explore employee benefits and wellness programs in more detail, understanding their design and impact on employee well-being and organizational success. Join us as we continue our exploration of human capital management. Episode 17, Managing Human Capital, Employee Benefits and Wellness Programs Welcome back to Managing Human Capital at MBA Business School. In this episode, we'll dive deeper into the topic of employee benefits and wellness programs and how they play a crucial role in human capital management. Think of your organization as a sports team once more, but this time, consider the importance of maintaining the player's physical and mental well-being. Just as athletes need proper training, nutrition, and rest to perform at their best, employees also require support for their overall well-being. Let's explore this analogy further. 1. Athletes' health and performance An athlete's performance depends not only on their skills, but also on their physical and mental health. Similarly, employees' well-being directly impacts their performance and productivity. 2. Training and wellness Just as athletes undergo training and wellness programs to stay in peak condition, organizations offer wellness programs to support employees' physical and mental health. This can include fitness initiatives, mental health resources, and stress management programs. 3. Team Cohesion Athletes perform better when they feel supported and connected to their team. Similarly, a workplace that prioritizes employee well-being fosters a sense of belonging and teamwork. 4. Longevity and Success Athletes with good health and wellness routines tend to have longer, successful careers. Likewise, organizations that invest in employee well-being often experience higher retention rates and overall success. Now, let's connect this to our real-life example. Companies A and B are back in focus. Company A, known for its comprehensive human capital management practices, excels in offering employee benefits and wellness programs. They provide healthcare coverage, mental health resources, fitness programs, and stress management initiatives. This keeps their employees healthy, motivated, and engaged. Company B, however, lacks a robust wellness program and offers limited benefits. This results in higher stress levels among employees, leading to reduced job satisfaction and productivity. In this scenario, Company A's commitment to employee benefits and wellness programs significantly contributes to their success. 
They understand that a healthy, well-supported workforce is essential for long-term organizational success. As you progress through this program, we'll explore strategies for designing and implementing effective employee benefits and wellness programs. These initiatives are crucial for promoting employee well-being and organizational success. In our next episode, we will delve into workforce planning and forecasting, understanding how to plan for the organization's future workforce needs. Join us as we continue our exploration of human capital management. Episode 18, Managing Human Capital Workforce Planning and Forecasting Welcome back to Managing Human Capital at MBA Business School. In this episode, we'll explore the critical topic of workforce planning and forecasting and its significance in human capital management. Imagine your organization as a ship once more, but this time, consider the importance of charting a course that anticipates future storms and opportunities. Just as a skilled navigator plans for various sea conditions, workforce planning and forecasting help your organization prepare for future workforce needs. Let's delve into this analogy. 1. Navigating Future Waters Much like a ship must navigate through ever-changing conditions, your organization must adapt to evolving business landscapes. Workforce planning is your navigation plan. 2. Charting the course, effective workforce planning involves analyzing current talent, predicting future needs, and creating a roadmap to acquire, develop, and retain the right talent to achieve organizational goals. 3. Preparing for storms. Just as sailors prepare for storms, workforce planning prepares your organization for potential challenges such as skill shortages, demographic shifts, and technological advancements. 4. Seizing Opportunities A well-prepared ship can capitalize on opportunities in uncharted waters. Similarly, a workforce that aligns with organizational goals can seize emerging opportunities in the market. Now, let's connect this to our real-life example. Companies A and B are back in focus. Company A, known for its comprehensive human capital management practices, excels in workforce planning and forecasting. They analyze market trends, identify skill gaps, and proactively hire, train, and develop talent to meet future needs. This strategic approach helps them stay competitive and agile. Company B, however, lacks a structured workforce planning process. They often find themselves unprepared for changes in the industry, leading to talent shortages and difficulties in achieving their business goals. In this scenario, Company A's commitment to workforce planning and forecasting significantly contributes to their success. They understand that proactive planning is crucial for adapting to change and ensuring the organization's long-term viability. As you progress through this program, we'll explore strategies for effective workforce planning and forecasting, helping you anticipate and meet your organization's future talent needs. In our next episode, we will discuss employee feedback and engagement surveys, understanding methods for collecting employee feedback and measuring engagement. Join us as we continue our exploration of human capital management. Episode 19, Managing Human Capital Employee Feedback and Engagement Surveys Welcome back to Managing Human Capital at MBA Business School. In this episode, we'll dive into the important topic of employee feedback and engagement surveys and their role in human capital management. Imagine your organization as a thriving garden once more, but this time, consider the importance of regularly checking the soil's health and the plant's vitality. Just as a gardener uses feedback from the garden's conditions to make adjustments, organizations must gather feedback from employees to nurture a positive work environment. Let's explore this analogy further. 1. The garden's health. A garden thrives when its soil is healthy, plants receive the right nutrients, and potential issues like pests or diseases are addressed promptly. Similarly, an organization thrives when it monitors its work environment and addresses employee concerns. 2. Feedback as fertilizer. Employee feedback is like fertilizer for your organization. It nourishes growth, identifies areas for improvement, and helps prevent issues from spreading. 3. Measuring engagement. Engagement surveys are like the tools a gardener uses to measure soil moisture and plant health. 
Employee engagement surveys provide valuable data to gauge employee satisfaction, motivation, and commitment. 4. Tending to concerns. Just as a gardener must address issues in the garden, organizations should address employee concerns and suggestions to maintain a healthy workplace culture. Now, let's connect this to our real-life example. Companies A and B are back in focus. Company A, known for its comprehensive human capital management practices, excels in gathering employee feedback and conducting engagement surveys. They use this feedback to make improvements in the workplace, address concerns promptly, and boost employee satisfaction and loyalty. Company B, however, lacks a robust feedback system. They miss out on valuable insights from their employees, resulting in unresolved issues and declining morale. In this scenario, Company A's commitment to employee feedback and engagement surveys significantly contributes to their success. They understand that listening to employees and taking action based on their feedback creates a positive and productive work environment. As you progress through this program, we'll explore various methods and best practices for collecting employee feedback and measuring engagement. These tools are essential for fostering a workplace where employees feel heard, valued, and engaged. In our next episode, we will delve into HR technology and digital transformation, understanding how technology is transforming HR practices and operations. Join us as we continue our exploration of human capital management. Episode 20, Managing Human Capital HR Technology and Digital Transformation Welcome back to Managing Human Capital at MBA Business School. In this episode, we'll explore the transformative topic of HR technology and digital transformation and how it's reshaping human capital management. Consider your organization as a bustling city once more, but this time, envision the role of advanced technology in optimizing various functions, from transportation to communication. Similarly, HR technology and digital transformation are revolutionizing how HR departments operate and manage human capital. Let's delve into this analogy. 1. The digital cityscape. In a digitally transformed city, advanced technology enhances efficiency, accessibility, and connectivity. Likewise, HR technology transforms HR processes, making them more efficient, accessible, and connected. 2. Streamlined processes. Just as digital tools streamline city services, HR technology streamlines HR functions, from recruitment to performance management, making them more user-friendly and efficient. 3. Enhanced communication, digital transformation enhances communication within the city through smart infrastructure. Similarly, HR technology improves communication within the organization, enabling better engagement, feedback, and collaboration among employees. 4. Data-driven decision-making. Just as data analytics guide urban planning, HR technology provides data-driven insights that enable better HR decision-making. This includes talent analytics, performance metrics, and predictive analysis. Now, let's connect this to our real-life example. Companies A and B are back in focus. Company A, known for its comprehensive human capital management practices, embraces HR technology and digital transformation. They have automated HR processes, implemented cloud-based HR systems, and use data analytics for talent management. This allows them to make informed decisions and optimize their human capital strategies. Company B, however, lags behind in adopting HR technology. They rely on manual processes, paper-based documentation, and outdated systems, which hinder their ability to adapt to changing workforce dynamics. In this scenario, Company A's commitment to HR technology and digital transformation significantly contributes to their success. They understand that leveraging technology not only improves HR efficiency but also enables better decision-making and a more engaging employee experience. As you progress through this program, we'll explore various HR technologies, digital tools, and best practices for embracing digital transformation in HR operations. In our next episode, we will explore managing cross-cultural teams, understanding how to lead teams comprised of diverse cultural backgrounds. 
Join us as we continue our exploration of human capital management. Episode 21, Managing Human Capital, Managing Cross-Cultural Teams. Welcome back to Managing Human Capital at MBA Business School. In this episode, we'll delve into the important topic of managing cross-cultural teams and its significance in human capital management. Imagine your organization as a global village, where people from diverse cultural backgrounds come together to work and collaborate. In today's interconnected world, organizations often comprise teams with members from various cultures, making effective cross-cultural management essential. Let's explore this analogy further. 1. The Global Village Your organization's workforce is like a diverse village where people from different cultures live and work together. 2. Cultural Bridges Effective cross-cultural management acts as bridges that connect and facilitate communication among individuals from diverse backgrounds. 3. Celebrating Diversity Just as a village celebrates its cultural festivals, organizations should embrace and celebrate diversity, recognizing the unique strengths that each cultural perspective brings to the table. 4. Common goals, despite cultural differences, all villagers in your organization must work towards common goals and objectives, which require effective cross-cultural leadership. Now, let's connect this to our real-life example. Companies A and B are back in focus. Company A, known for its comprehensive human capital management practices, excels in managing cross-cultural teams. They provide cultural sensitivity training foster an inclusive environment, and have leaders who understand the value of diverse perspectives. This leads to enhanced creativity and problem-solving within their teams. Company B, however, faces challenges in managing cross-cultural teams. They often encounter communication breakdowns, misunderstandings, and reduced team cohesion, affecting overall productivity. In this scenario, Company A's commitment to managing cross-cultural teams significantly contributes to their success. They understand that embracing cultural diversity not only enriches the organization but also enhances its competitive edge in a global marketplace. As you progress through this program, we'll explore strategies and best practices for effectively managing cross-cultural teams, promoting inclusivity, and leveraging the strengths of a diverse workforce. In our next episode, we will tackle the topic of ethical leadership in HR, understanding the ethical challenges faced by HR professionals and strategies for ethical decision-making. Join us as we continue our exploration of human capital management. Episode 22, Managing Human Capital Ethical Leadership in HR Welcome back to Managing Human Capital at MBA Business School. In this episode, we'll explore the essential topic of ethical leadership in HR and its profound impact on human capital management. Imagine your organization as a community governed by a set of ethical principles, where trust and integrity are paramount. In the realm of HR, ethical leadership is the cornerstone that guides the fair and responsible treatment of employees and stakeholders. Let's delve into this analogy. 1. The Ethical Community Your organization is like a community where ethical values, fairness, and integrity are upheld by its leaders. 2. Ethical Compass Ethical leadership serves as the compass that guides HR professionals in making decisions that are morally sound, just, and in line with ethical principles. 3. Building Trust Just as trust is vital for a harmonious community, ethical leadership builds trust between HR leaders, employees, and stakeholders. 4. Upholding Values Ethical leaders in HR uphold the organization's values, ensuring that HR practices and policies align with ethical standards and laws. Now, let's connect this to our real-life example. Companies A and B are back in focus. Company A, known for its comprehensive human capital management practices, prioritizes ethical leadership in HR. They have a strong code of ethics, enforce strict anti-discrimination policies, and make ethical decisions even in challenging situations. This fosters a culture of trust and integrity within the organization. Company B, however, faces ethical challenges within its HR department. 
They have been involved in several legal disputes related to discrimination and unfair labor practices, tarnishing their reputation and affecting employee morale. In this scenario, Company A's commitment to ethical leadership in HR significantly contributes to their success. They understand that ethical HR practices not only align with legal requirements but also contribute to a positive work environment and strong organizational reputation. As you progress through this program, we'll delve deeper into ethical dilemmas HR professionals may encounter and explore strategies for ethical decision-making in HR. In our next episode, we will discuss HR strategy and alignment with business goals, understanding how HR strategies align with and support overall business objectives. Join us as we continue our exploration of human capital management. Episode 23, Managing Human Capital HR Strategy and Alignment with Business Goals. Welcome back to Managing Human Capital at MBA Business School. In this episode, we'll explore the critical topic of HR strategy and alignment with business goals and its profound impact on human capital management. Imagine your organization as a grand architectural project, where every element, from the foundation to the finishing touches, must align with the overall design and purpose. Similarly, HR strategy acts as the architect, ensuring that the organization's human capital efforts are seamlessly integrated with its overarching business goals. Let's delve into this analogy. 1. The Architectural Blueprint Think of your organization as a magnificent building with a specific design and purpose. 2. The HR Architect HR strategy serves as the architect, responsible for designing and aligning the structure of human capital management with the organization's overall business blueprint. 3. Seamless Integration just as a well-designed building seamlessly integrates its various components, HR alignment with business goals results in a well-functioning organization where every aspect contributes to achieving strategic objectives. For measuring success, the success of an architectural project is assessed by how well it meets its intended purpose and design. Similarly, HR's success is measured by its ability to support the organization in reaching its business goals. Now, let's connect this to our real-life example. Companies A and B are back in focus. Company A, known for its comprehensive human capital management practices, excels in aligning HR strategy with business goals. They view HR as an integral part of the organization's strategic planning process, ensuring that human capital initiatives are designed to directly contribute to achieving the company's strategic objectives. This alignment enhances the organization's overall performance and success. Company B, however, struggles with HR alignment. They treat HR as a separate function, rather than a strategic partner, and miss opportunities to integrate human capital efforts with business goals. This disconnect hinders their ability to maximize the impact of their HR practices on overall business outcomes. In this scenario, Company A's commitment to HR strategy and alignment with business goals significantly contributes to their success. They understand that HR is not a standalone function but a strategic architect that plays a critical role in achieving the organization's vision. As you progress through this program, we'll explore strategies for aligning HR with business goals, ensuring that human capital management is an integral part of the organization's overall strategic design. In our next episode, we will discuss employee development and training ROI, understanding how to measure the return on investment of employee development programs. Join us as we continue our exploration of human capital management. Episode 24, Managing Human Capital, Employee Development and Training ROI Welcome back to Managing Human Capital at MBA Business School. In this episode, we'll dive into the significant topic of employee development and training ROI and how it impacts human capital management. Imagine your organization as a professional sports team, where each player undergoes rigorous training to improve their skills and contribute to the team's success. Similarly, investing in employee development and training programs is like training your workforce to achieve their highest potential and drive organizational growth. Let's delve into this analogy. 1. The professional sports team. Think of your organization as a high-performing sports team aiming for excellence in every aspect of the game. 
2. Training for excellence. Just as athletes train relentlessly to enhance their performance, employees require training and development opportunities to reach their full potential. 3. Winning strategy. Like a sports team that adopts winning strategies through continuous training, organizations that invest in employee development gain a competitive edge and achieve their goals more effectively. 4. Measuring success. In sports, success is often measured by wins, championships, and performance metrics. Similarly, in HR, the success of employee development and training is measured by the return on investment, ROI, it generates. Now, let's connect this to our real-life example. Companies A and B are back in focus. Company A, known for its comprehensive human capital management practices, excels in employee development and training ROI. They invest in tailored training programs, skill development initiatives, and continuous learning opportunities for their employees. This investment not only enhances employee skills, but also leads to improved performance, innovation, and a positive impact on the bottom line. Company B, however, falls short in the area of employee development and training ROI. They view training as an expense rather than an investment and often provide generic, one-size-fits-all training programs that fail to address specific skill gaps. This results in stagnant employee growth and limited ROI. In this scenario, Company A's commitment to employee development and training ROI significantly contributes to their success. They understand that by investing in their employees' growth and development, they can achieve higher productivity, innovation, and competitiveness. As you progress through this program, we'll explore methods for measuring the ROI of employee development and training programs, helping you make data-driven decisions to enhance your workforce's capabilities and drive organizational success. In our final episode, we will reflect on the journey of managing human capital, summarizing the key learnings, and emphasizing the crucial role of human capital management in organizational success. Join us as we conclude our exploration of human capital management. Episode 25, Managing Human Capital, Reflecting on Human Capital Management. Welcome to the final episode of Managing Human Capital at MBA Business School. In this episode, we will reflect on our journey through the world of human capital management and its profound impact on organizational success. Imagine your journey through this program as a road trip, with each episode as a milestone along the way. Now, as we reach our destination, let's take a moment to look back at the key lessons and insights we've gathered. 1. The Essence of Human Capital we began by understanding that human capital, the collective knowledge, skills, and abilities of an organization's workforce, is the driving force behind success in today's knowledge-based economy. 2. Strategies for Success We explored a wide range of strategies, from talent acquisition and employee motivation to diversity and inclusion, all aimed at optimizing human capital for organizational growth. 3. Real-life examples Along the way, we examined the journeys of companies A and B, highlighting the tangible impact of effective human capital management practices on their success. 4. Ethical leadership We emphasized the importance of ethical leadership in HR, understanding that trust, integrity, and fairness are essential components of effective human capital management. 5. The Role of Data We embrace the power of data and analytics, recognizing that HR metrics and technology-driven insights can guide informed decisions and enhance HR strategies. 6. Nurturing Growth Employee development and training ROI were explored as essential elements of fostering continuous learning and growth within an organization. Throughout our journey, we discovered that human capital management is not just a function, it's the heart and soul of an organization. It's about recognizing that your employees are your most valuable asset and investing in their well-being, development, and engagement is the key to success. As you continue your career and apply these insights, remember that managing human capital is not a one-time endeavor, but an ongoing commitment. Stay open to innovation, adapt to change, and always put people at the center of your organization's strategy. Thank you for joining us on this enlightening journey through managing human capital. We hope you carry these lessons with you as you strive for excellence in the world of business and human capital management. Best of luck in your future endeavors.